<laughs> I can't chew gum. <laughs> 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 Whole time. That's ASMR. Where'd you put your gum? It's in my hand. Oh, that's gross. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it now. <laughs> put it under the table. <laughs> yeah, like it's cool. Just oh, I'll forget about it and step in it. Do you want to go find a garbage can? We got a minute. Go find a garbage can. Yeah, go find a garbage can. There. Um, what kind of levels? What levels so, are we talking about? So our sponsor is Polaris. So I got to intro uh, the show. No. I'm out of here. <laughs> you could have had the Jay and Blaze show sponsor it. We'll give you like 50 bucks. We're on. An IOU. You're going to be an IOU. Keep that one. Yeah, just keep that in your pocket. Welcome to the Snow West Show. I'm Ryan Harris, your host of the Snow West Show. Uh, as well, we do Snow West Magazine. We sell merch, uh, Snow West forums, like like Snow West Instagram. Like we, way too many things going on here to remember you, what all we do. But you, you got a lot of irons in the fire, we, but it's awesome. We do too much. We stuff, love you, but it's fun. You do oh. too much, but yeah. Well, the, feel, the feelings the mutual. Fire. We love you, Jay. Not so much blame, but we love you, Jay. Oh. <laughs> Told you. Um, we, before we get into uh, this, is going to be a fun show. Uh, I got to mention our sponsors. Snow West Show is sponsored by Polaris Snowmobiles. The Polaris Pro and KR, Polaris Pro and Chaos RMKs are engineered for instant lift, effortless control, and immediate response. Flickability. Flickability. That word is still out there. Flickability. Uh, check out the 850 RMKs in stock at your local dealer or go to Polaris.com. You guys are just going to make this all sorts of fun, aren't you? <laughs> Go to Polaris.com. Uh, the, the 850 RMKs are in stock. This is a, a rare year. We have sleds before snow. and But what the snow is going to come. We're going to get pounded. Yeah, it's we'll, coming. We'll get it's like snow. old times again. It is. This is like a normal year. We're getting back to it. We got spoiled last yeah, year. Yeah, definitely spoiled last year. All right. Oh, and then sponsored by the Jay and Blaine Show. Yeah. And here we have we have the Jay and the Blaine of the Jay and Blaine Show. That's and then uh, we have our co-host, Bruce Kerbs, test writer for Snow West Magazine. Yep. Uh, so, Jay and Blaine. That's us, the one and only. Yeah. Uh, good to be back. Jay Manaberry, Blaine Matthews, both Rimshaw Pro Hill Climbers, Skidoo Factory Racers, Skidoo Athletes, Skidoo Ambassadors. All of the above. Yeah. What, what's the favorite job out of the four or the five or the six? Um, they all kind of come with their perks, you know, like when you talk in the racing side, you know, obviously the, the competition side of it's most epic you know i mean trying to compete and win is tough there's the parts of being behind the scenes on the race side and there's the same thing with the ambassador side of stuff you know you get you get to go do some really cool stuff you know obviously riding snowmobiles is what we do and uh it's, it's our way of life and uh so i don't know it's kind of they all have their parks i don't know if i could pick a favorite part of that you know it's, but, it's, but the racing side of it you get you get like the hand-built cool parts and the yeah your sleds get a lot of attention especially at the race sleds like yeah they they definitely used our race sleds for r d and speaking of that's one of my favorite parts at this point in my life is the uh, development of future product uh, i kind of geek out on that for sure um i, I think we all do yeah. trying to figure out what's what's next what's going to be better how do we make this and that better and it's just really neat to work with the engineers and and you know go back and forth with them to find out and figure out what's what do we do next what's been one of the the favorite experiences you've had on something that's out and been released not something that's coming obviously yeah we can't talk about that can't talk about that <laughs> i think for I mean, me you can you, if you, you can we're not gonna we're, i'm not gonna hold you up but pay us we'll tell you some stuff <laughs> Just kidding, I will not. <laughs> Fred, you didn't hear that? Fred. Frederick. We love you. No, I think uh, <coughs> something that's my favorite thing that to be a part of is the HCE. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. that's that's kind of our baby, you know. We've we spent when I say our baby, you know, that's it ski doos obviously, but uh, we've been riding that skid for three or four four years now, I think. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we started with the prototype skid back in 2020 or 21 20, I think it was. So yeah 21 years, early 21 so you know and, and where it started then you know we still have those prototype skids that we first started racing um following do we race with them at jackson i think that year the first race that it saw was afton okay and i threw right. it in there like the night before yeah so. and i was like 
All right, let's try it out. But Man, to see where it started sweet. from to, you know, now it's there's a production skid, a production sled, the HC itself. So that's kind of my, I think my favorite part of that is that something's come to light. Uh, been a lot of work behind that. I mean, the amount of hours and seat time we've put in on that sled and spent with the engineers at Skidoo at the race department, you know, it's you start getting a lot of pride in that. And uh, so it's, it's cool to be a part of something big like that, you know. And I think the consumers, you know, that sled's now av available to consumers, not just a race program only thing. They're going to, I think more and more consumers are going to find a liking to that, that sled and that, that suspension, the way it works. And it's, and it's not for everybody, you know. It's, what, it's, what does it do different? Like, I'm, I, I, I rode it, but I rode it down Highway 20 for 15 miles. Yeah, like from West Yellowstone to... <laughs> that night? Park. We, we rode it home when we got stranded <laughs> in West Yellowstone. Got snowed in in West Yellowstone. Oh, yeah. Like, for, speak, speaking of Fred, bless his heart. Yeah, he's a, he, like, he let us take Fred's the, an awesome the HC, HC prototypes back to the cabin. <laughs> I think home. The, the, what it really does for myself is it's built for gnarly stuff. You know, like the big, big hits, the big bumps, the rough country... You know, it, it was developed around racing, and racing, hill climb racing is rough, it's rugged, it's not, you know, smooth and nice. So that's what that suspension was focused on, is making the sled handle the best. And so, you know, the, the really gnarly riders say, and, and even a beginner rider would get along with it. I mean, that's the cool thing of these, these snowmobiles these days. But the ability it has to, to take some gnarly riding and make it comfortable and handle really well is, is I think, what so it So compared to, like, a free ride, what, what is it doing different? Just just way more aggressive valving? Stronger? It's different geometry and everything, too? Like yeah. Is it transfer yeah. the same? It, it, uh, it's completely different geometry, essentially. You know, it's got components from a lot of different sleds in the past, kind of what it is. But, yeah, it has different, different uh, front arm on it. Um, obviously, the rear arm set back quite a bit more. If you remember back in 2013, the free rides, you know, the rear arm was set quite a bit back. Mm -hmm. There was some different arms. It's kind of based off that a little bit, too, and mixed in with some RS stuff. Um, but, yeah, it, it is a different skid. You know, it's not the same base skeleton, say, as what it would be on the free ride. You know, it's um, different different angles and geometry completely there. And, but in the valving, you know, is different because of that. Yeah. Um, different shock angles. and yeah. But bottom line, like the feel you're gonna get from the HCE versus the consumer free ride or the you know the free ride, yeah, is the faster and harder you hit stuff, you're gonna have more capacity. So like on the uh, the regular free ride, I'll call it, is you're gonna bottom out more than the HCE, and it keeps the the front end down. Like it transfers a lot less, um, so it's gonna be straighter and flatter, which is a good and a bad thing. Um, depends what you're doing. The but. sled also has a little bit lower, like, bumper ride height in the back. Yeah. It's like two or three inches, like, if you were to measure the rear bumper, the free ride. Compared to the HCE, the HCE's rear bumper is going to, the chassis sits flatter, you know, more level, which for what we do, the racing and, and some of the riding, you know, it just feels better balanced to us, you know. Yeah. So it gives it, yeah, I mean, they, when you get on the two sleds, there's a, a very big noticeable difference well it, it it's not it's not like the latest generation of skidoo's mountain sled it is it is a purpose-built race sled for you guys and consumers yeah. c consumers can buy them because to race it legally they have to build a yep. certain amount, certain certain amount. amount. Yeah. So yeah we're not saying that this is the go-to sled yeah. like it's a purpose -built. don't get us wrong we love this sled but it's not what you want to buy if you're the weekend warrior yeah, yeah. or if you like the wheelie yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> if you like the wheelie, the wheelie Kings, 146 Turbo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Those are yeah. Fun. you're right. Yeah. We've got one of those we've got to go pick up next week. I oh. think I already got that one, so <clears throat> sorry. I'm not telling you where it's at. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know you would go get it. Well, I already have <laughs> one, so Blaine would go get it. Yeah. I'll so, it. all right, so I want to know <laughs> what happened last year during the race season oh, race season. we're gonna we're gonna talk we're about going that. there all right we're, we're going, going there. there i want to hear from you too because you two were kicking everybody's ass what how you guys were how many races in were you and you were leading points in a few classes and yeah so running the hce yep last components. year that sled was actually a race department sled um and you know long story short there was just a simple mistake mistake somewhere. It was nothing intentional at all this, you know. Yeah. But at the end of the day, that sled was doomed illegal to race. 
and we'd been racing it for I think three or four races. That was a fourth race, th three races. It was the fourth race in. It yeah. was yeah. right before it. the fourth race, right? Yeah. Like yeah, right. Literally after the night before we go racing, we get the call. Like nine o'clock. Hey, those are illegal. Can't ride them. Which and race it, was this? Bear Lake two. Bear Lake. Yeah, the, the second, second Bear, Bear Lake. Lake. So we've already been to the first Bear Lake, Afton, Granby, Granby Colorado, and the Thursday night before the second Bear Lake, 9.30 at night. We're getting ready to go to bed and go to the race in the morning. And we get a call from our race director, Kerry Deku, and he said, bad news, boys, can't race that. Your stock classes yeah. can't race those sleds. So we're like, are you joking? <laughs> Like, yeah. Well, yeah, this is night before. <laughs> yeah. Twelve yeah. hours, we'll be on the snow. Yeah. What, what was the point situation at that? At so that, that it kind of turned into, you know, a, I think a couple of weeks later, there was meetings through ISR and all this stuff, and they, you know, determined, uh, well, what do they do for punishment? So they took what they did is they took our points away, um, up leading up to that that time, because from that point on, we we raced the regular free rides, um, consumer free rides last year. And, uh, and then any long as we were on those sleds, they were legal. So um, we lost points for three races, and at those three races, we had some some great success. You know, I think I was uh, either right behind Keith or leading the open stock class. I know I was maybe maybe it was thousand stock. I can't remember, but yeah, we were in top three um, positions in a couple classes. So it was tough, you know. But at the end of the day, you know, we we got over. It was a heartache for a minute, and uh, we made the best of the rest of the season. You know, we kind of built a fire under us. You know, I said, okay, well, you know, if that's – there was a lot of emotion involved in it too, and, and it's hard not to get caught up in that, but we tried our best to just stay on the straight and narrow and stay professional about it and, and stay down to business. You know, we still got races, and we can still go win. You know, even the consumer edition at the time, you know, free ride, the base model free ride there, was still very capable of being competitive. We've won on that sled for years in a row. You know, we've had a lot of success. So it wasn't like, oh no, we're screwed. It was just kind of like, we really like these sleds. The HCE is our is our favorite. It's it's the baby to race on. So, but it just it just turned out that you lost points because yeah, as you did those first three races yep, on that. So, and uh, so ten took us out of some points championship races. Yeah. Um, but uh, we we fought the rest of the year and, and still had some success. You know, we. I think I still ended up in the top five in open stock, which was cool. It was a, a good a good feat for myself. That was kind of a goal to see if I can get back into the point race a little bit. Um, if we had a few more races, I think it would have been awesome. But we run out of run out of winter really. So, but that's but. what's cool about the <laughs> HCE. Like, like now that 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 sled is out there built built to the numbers to fully homologated in the oh, race yeah. program, meet oh, ISR yeah. regulations. Yep. And <clears throat> and if you want to like if somebody wants to go support Jay and Blaine and Factory Skidoo hill climbing. You can go get an H HC and you can be riding the the, the sled that, Same, that is yeah, driving yeah. driving the hill you know professional hill climbing with yeah with it's Packers a Kadoo. it's an in season model now so I mean certain a handful of dealers I think you know they get a lot of, a lot at a certain amount of sleds you know like Jason Hurd was here this morning we were talking to him I think he's got four of them so it's pretty much you can walk into a dealer and if they have one you could buy it you know it's not a snow check so it's pretty yeah. cool and pretty it's cool the deal. same machine that we'll be racing so yeah exactly. That's, I mean, is it a first in the industry that that's happened? No, no. There's been there. There were hill climbing. There were XRS, right. XRS, and but and things that was like more that like past. branded. Like this thing is literally specifically built for that I, kind of. Yeah, ride. you're right. You're right. The to XRS that point. was like a summit in the day mm -hmm. with different color scheme and a wide front end. Right. Piggyback shots. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, some details were related to hill climb specifically but this thing is like the cat's meow of well you're right and that's that's the point i'm trying to make like yeah like the hc exists so that that you guys have that race sled. Yep. yeah a, a and, weapon in racing and because of the rules you have to build so many now people can go buy it that's that's the only reason it's there really yep and it's but it's it, it, it is a different riding experience it's a different it is terrain experience yeah yeah, and it'll be interesting to see, you know, I, I think it's going to gain a little traction, you know, I think, like I say, it is purpose built, it's not going to be for everybody, there's going to be people that aren't going to get along with it, that doesn't fit their riding style, but I think it'll gain a little traction, I think you'll see a little demand for maybe more of them, that's, you know, and I'd hope to see that, because that's good feedback for us, you know, it's kind of yeah. a job well done, It's it works both on the race course and the backcountry, so. I'm really interested to see after this first year, for those that did buy it, the consumers that did buy it what their thoughts are 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Versus well, a full mountain sled. Yeah. yeah. Like, and, and, and who are they? What do they do? What are they What are they trying to ride? Like, yeah, you might find that next group of snowmobilers that isn't the backcountry guys that don't right. go to, you know, yeah. that they don't middle, want, middle ground. That, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Who, who does it fit? Where does it fit in? Does it, like, is it? whole new sense or whole new category where do we feedback. go from here yep. yeah like yeah thing. so it's so it's interesting Dude. time will tell yeah yeah it's it i was thinking about this the other day like like you go back to the i don't know late 90s early 2000s like there were there was a, a western uh snow cross circuit mm -hmm. like, there were a lot more people racing and a lot more yeah. grass grassroots racing it and it wasn't uncommon for people to have their mountain sled and then to have like a 440 or a 600 race right sled. yep yeah. but you just don't see that in the west anymore Partly because there's no racing circuit out here. There's no snow cross circuit right. or cross country circuit. And then hill climbing, like what does it take if if somebody is sitting out there and they they're like, yeah, I, I would do hill climbing, but how do you do it? Like, yeah, what what is that process? And that's the kind of the neat thing with hill climbing is like, yeah, like at our level, we you know we have a purpose built sled for a reason. You know, it, we feel it works the best. That's what we need. That's what we enjoy to have on the race course. But at the end of the day, you know, some of the summit SP can show up and race absolutely you know, i mean yeah. it's pretty minimal you know like basically plus, traction plus screws in your track put a snow flap on it flap, so it's a tether ready to go and do you know register for the race and you can come race you know yeah. versus, so yeah. like compared to snow cross because i tried i tried snow cross for a few years and being a mountain rider it's like a whole nother realm Different sled that I've ever than I've ever ridden. You know, short track, very stiff. D you know, the course is a lot of jumps, which we jump a lot in the backcountry. But it's it's Super like rough. oh, so rough. So I guess what I'm getting at is um, to hill climb, it's relatively similar to everyday riding, whereas any other type of racing is like a whole new universe. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. So if if somebody wanted to like get in, like you could go to a hill climb race and be familiar with the mo the maneuvers and the the movement. The mountain. Yeah, yeah it's mountain. a mountain. You're yeah. going up you're the hills going through up, trees. Yeah, yeah exactly. Just gates. Exactly. So, yeah, I did the circuit. Did you know that? I no, did, I, I raced no. Grimshaw. I used to race Rocky Mountain Snowcross. Uh huh. I did snowcross for several years, a uh, little cross country, and then raced the hill climb circuit in wow. 90, 99, 2000. Really? Yeah, with That's Rasmussen. Cool. Oh, really? Yeah. Like yeah. on his. Team or uh, what do you mean, he, what do you so, mean with, with so he built he built our mod sled. It was like a, a snowless project sled, oh. and we raced it. Oh, that's oh, cool. cool. So we ran we ran uh, a six hundred. So we ran six stock, seven stock, eight stock, and then you could run four back then. I think. Yep. So six stock, seven stock, and then eight mod, and that's I don't cool. think we had thousand mod back then. Eight mod and open mod. Open. Yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. It was fun. We should but, do that again. But anyway, so if, if Bruce if Bruce down here is going to go enter a race, like which one should you start with? I did do Afton. Oh, well, you did. Right yeah. That's your first. Yeah, you did. That's jumping. That's in. the <laughs> only one I did. That's I know. Jumping right? in. Yeah, I pulled up to the hill. It's like bam. <laughs> yeah, it's and literally and rocks yeah. everywhere. Yeah. No, I, I think Bear Lake. Yeah. Is is in that, and it's you typically our first race, and we kind of like that because it's. You know, you've been testing and practicing, and you're ready to go, but it's always that first race of the season, you know, like kind of get the first race jitters out. Like, it's the here, appetizer. Like, yeah. yeah. The and icebreaker. It's, it's still challenging. You know, it's obviously the challenging part is to go win. You know, there's some, some extreme talent out there in Rimshaw. There's some, just some good riders. But Bear Lake's a little more forgiving. You know, it's open. It's on more of a sagebrush hill, you know, so there's not the trees and the stumps, you know, but – and not as much snow typically as some of the other venues. So you don't get the big holes in the trenches, but that that'd be the race to start as Bear Lake. Well, it depends. Like if you're from Colorado, like Granby Winter Park area, true. That one is a great one to start at as well. Yeah. Um, I I guess we should narrow it down to the ones you shouldn't start at. <laughs> yeah. Jacks, probably Jackson, Jackson Afton. Afton. I argue Jackson though because. If yeah. you're looking to dabble in their hill climb racing, they have the amateur class, yeah. so you can try it. And it's and they go to the first catwalk. A lot of people do that for the experience. You know, like the amateur class is so cool. You'll the, there's half of those people in there that are probably pretty lower level riders. Sometimes you'll see. 
but they just want the experience. They they found out they could enter it. They did it, you know, and they're way out of their element. And it's cool <laughs> to see that, you know, they're just like, holy And crap. they're on the biggest what, stage. Yeah, yeah, what did I sign up for? And then the top five get a shot at the top of the mountain, and they're just yeah. like, what am I getting into? And it's pretty entertaining, you know. It's like throwing the first pitch at a MLB game or, <laughs> you know, when somebody's when they select somebody at the a, 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 what is it? N- NBA? Yeah. NBA Basketball? game. NBA. <laughs> shoot like a... I mean, those three-letter words are just <laughs> killers. Man. It's not a word. It's joke's on you. <laughs> anyway. Uh, those acronyms? Acronym. <laughs> I, was, I didn't want to use the word acronym. What? <laughs> <laughs> Train is derailed. <laughs> hey, so back to your competition. Here's a question. When you start the season or you go to a race... Who is the one guy that you're like, I'd love to beat him today? You really yeah. have to ask. Keith Curtis. Okay, let's go away from Keith Curtis. Is there, is there a couple others that you're like? Him. Him? Yeah, literally. Well, is there a pretty good competition between you two? Yeah. you ever like some at night, you like your piece of... No, there's no trash yeah. talk. Like, it's, We actually, you know, I, I think him and I are a team. You know, we've right. been a yeah. team for quite a few years now. And uh, we both want to win. But at the same time, we cheer each other on yeah. just as much to hope they win. Because sure. at the end of the day, it's like, look, one of us need to go win. Yeah. Like, we're, we look at our program as one, and, uh, you know, we just need to be on top. As long as one of us is on top, we're doing That's our cool. job. You yeah. Know? And, and so, but, you know, like across other manufacturers, you know, you got Andy Thomas. You mm-hmm. know, dude's a weapon. So um, Andy and Cole. And Cole. Sam yep. Peterson. Justin, Justin. Justin. I mean, it's there's a lot of guys, you know. but Mason. I typically don't pull up into the races going, okay, who do I got to beat? No. You know, I just show up saying, look, go find a way to win. If we can gotcha. if we can ride to the best of our abilities, then, for we, one, that's all we can do. But yeah. second, that's probably good enough to win. Yeah. Like, to beat Keith. Yeah. So. Cool. Who are, who are, like, the biggest sleepers out there? You know, there's, there's guys that Ooh. pretty much just race Jackson, but, like, like Luke Brandon Rainey King. just comes out of the woodwork and just... <clears throat> Wins everything sometimes. Yeah. yeah, he's yeah. Yeah, he's a he, he's not really a sleeper. I mean, Luke rainey has been good for he's, a long time. Yeah, he's yeah, won a lot yeah. of World titles and and so I wouldn't necessarily call him a sleeper because he's ex, you know people expect him like he can go win at any time and he does a lot. So I'm trying to think who comes to mind as far as a sleeper last year was Zach Masson. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're uh, not wrong. You ever no. heard of her? No. <laughs> <laughs> So, Zach Mastin, um, he used to race a little bit with Bart Butcher. He was kind of in Bart Butcher's wing when Bart was racing and then become Rimshaw president. Um, a good friend of ours as well. Um, and last year, he kind of wanted to come back and get in the racing scene a little bit. And he had one of his own sled. I think he had a Polaris. And uh, yeah. so he shows up, you know, wasn't quite prepared. And we said, look, man, we have some practice sleds and some spare sleds. Like, they're set up. Like, do you want to just ride our stuff? And he's been a Polaris rider his whole life. And, uh, of course, he, he was like, oh, I don't know if I'd ride one of those. So we just spent, told him go spend some time on him, come practice with us. Went to a few races and, and did really well. And he rolled our, rode, um, our old factory mods, which was really cool, you know. So he had, had some stellar equipment. Yeah. Know, that most 90% of the racers don't kind of get that equipment. We, without we say old, there. but they're 2022 20, factory <laughs> built mods. <laughs> like, and uh, <laughs> he kind of, you know, his previous year's racing, I think he, you know, got into his head a little bit. It's tough, you know, had some tough luck, and it just kind of burns a guy out. And so when he started having some good luck, I mean, he was in the top five and qualifying three, and everything, top know. three. And then uh, he was kind of digging it. He started coming to all the races, um, went to Jackson, and I think got an entry or two there for mm-hmm. Jackson. But then at Beaver Mountain, he shows up, and he was like totally different attitude. He's like, man, I just I want to do good. I want to do really good. And he's a, remember, he's a privateer. He's just kind of under our little wing, mm-hmm. and uh, I guess we were his factory. But uh, yeah. at, at Beaver Mountain. Still on Skidoo? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's still riding our sleds. And at Beaver Mountain, he uh, in nine improved. He run 9,000 improved as two of the classes he was running. He he broke drive, a drive shaft, spun a driver yeah. in nine improved. And he this was on finals day. So he was like, I want to go win 1,000 improved. Luke Rainey's in there. Colby Sam Crapo, Peterson, Sam, like hit Colby, yeah, yeah. a lot good, of heavy hitters, big hitters in there, and he come back to the trailer and he thought his day was ruined. He's bummed, you know. He's like, man, I just I'm starting to figure it out and I wanted to win. And I said, look, man, we can fix this. Like, yeah, 
give me some drivers and we have a few minutes i think we can get you back for 4000 proof which is the next class so it's a mass panic mechanicing in the trailer parts flying everywhere three four of us handing off wrenches so bolts flying get these, everywhere get these drivers swapped pretty much in time for him to roll up to the how, starting line like how long did it take you to do that oh uh, like 12 15 minutes i think oh my gosh <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it was, was fast. like NASCAR style. It was pretty cool. It was cool. And so he's he's thinking, I just don't think we're going to get it done. And I'm telling him, like, you'll be fine. Just get your watching. helmet, get your yeah, glove, get, get ready. You need to stay out of the way and be ready. <laughs> like, the sled's going to get thrown out of the trailer and you need to go. And that's pretty much was. He was kind of telling us, hey, I'm two or three guys out. Gets on the sled, goes to the line, and he just kind of looked at us and he goes, I want to go win this. And, you know, the most the race circuit was, you know, he was not expected to do that. And he goes out there, calls it, and then goes and wins the class. That's you know, cool. and it was yeah. so cool to see that, you know, his fire. And, and so after that, you know, he's a superly addicted. Of, you know, you got a taste of winning. Mm -hmm. you know, it'll really, you know, just rim shot self's addicting. And then you go win something in a pro class like that, in a, in a big pro class. You know, it. he's hooked. And this year he's a contracted scooty racer. So <laughs> it was pretty cool to see that. Um, but everybody was kind of like, holy crap, who's this guy? Yeah, you know, who are you? Like, so... Hopefully he can uh, keep rolling. He's a talented rider. He's a big dude. He's built like Keith. A little he's like stalker. a horse. Yeah, he's yeah. a big dude. Um, but in an athlete too. So yeah. we're hoping that uh, our little prodigy, or big prodigy Zach, is <laughs> is our secret weapon for the next few years. You know, we'll keep building the skidoo team. So. In case we like fall off the fall off the face, <laughs> we got Zach. We got Zach and be like, this is our guy. You got, you got a spare in the trailer. Yeah. Right? And he's like a bodyguard. Like, dude, uh, he's taller than you. He's twice as wide. Really? Not he's twice, a, but he's, he's just dude. a big, 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 big guy. guy. You'd love him. We'll, we'll meet. We'll introduce yeah, you. Yeah. Gentle giant, but but uh, anyway, sleeper Zach Masson. All right, yeah, not that's anymore. A good one. That's a good. Now one. he's a winner. So and like, I don't know if Sam Peterson would count as a sleeper, because he's always been good, but now he's like creeping up into the big classes, nine stock, thousand and stock, winning them. and winning them. Winning open stock. You know, he used you know. to be like, we were in pro. He and he semi pro winning that, and then he bumped up to like the six and seven improved stuff, smaller classes, was winning those, and now all of a sudden he's winning nine stock, thousand stock, bumping us out, and we're like, yeah. aren't you like in high school still or something? <laughs> <laughs> Sleeper's a tough term in yeah. because there's there's so many talented riders, you know, and you see like they'll just kind of be somewhere and then all of a sudden their success just goes here then it stays there and then it goes a little further and it stays there you know i don't see some riders you see this gradual incline of getting better and a lot of riders you see a kind of a stagnant line for a while and then all of a sudden they take a big step and then they just stay there a minute and a big step so those big steps are kind of like the surprises they're like whoa oh yeah, yeah. good run well you then he does it for two more weeks and you're like well, he figured something out. You could oh. go from not qualifying to winning. It's crazy. In Rimshaw. See, see well, yeah, yeah like, because it's, it's hard to maintain consistency. Yeah. yeah. When, when, you, when you got to be perfect for a minute and 30 seconds, that's hard to do. Yeah. Day in and day out. Yeah. yeah do it and then do it in four or five classes in one weekend. And we're talking and perfect go to the next down race to the do it again. thousandth of a second. So, well, like, was it Mason that said the blurp of a throttle could be a first or second place? Yeah, well, first or it, fifth. It literally place. could. Yeah, yeah. At a certain time. Or the hill. way you the way you take off from the starting line. Yeah. And that's something that Keith Curtis is like the master at. Like, it's so easy to catch yourself sleeping a little bit on the first gate. On the first like, gate, yeah. like, all right, let's get to the hill. But right. with the competition now, like, the time starts at the light before the first gate. Like, yeah. it's lights first gate, and a lot of people they go wah 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 up out of the gate. And you watch Keith, and he will do everything he can to make sure he's going as fast as possible through the lights, whether he has to brake harder or not, you know. But when you get to the finish line, you're talking thousands of a second. I mean, I've seen it That's so much where it's 121.582, yeah. and then a guy beats you by .581, and you're like, you're talking this much, you know, a couple inches, yeah. you know, at that speed. And yeah, you watch, him, you watch him at Jackson, and he'll hit, the, if you pay attention to the timing, like he'll hit the first catwalk, and you can already tell, like, okay, yeah. he's ahead of the field mm -hmm. right there. Yeah. And, and that's he's where so he much time right off the bat. wins Jackson. It's the bottom of the hill, yeah. yeah. He wins it in the bottom because everyone's so thinking about the top, mm -hmm. you know, that. And it's and that's what makes it tough to to go and win Jackson is because that's the level of competition now is it used to be yeah you could just motor through the bottom get to the top and if you were clean through clean there you'd have top. a good time now you have to be perfect from the start light to the end you know so you have like, the bottom to yeah. NASCAR race through it's tough and then you got the gnarliest hill in the world pretty much to to be perfect through again because riders are so talented now that 
somebody's going to be perfect, so you just make sure it's you. Yeah. All the time. So who do you put on, on the Mount Rushmore of Rimshaw Racing? What does that mean? Mm. Oh, like their faces? Yeah. Like who, your Michael Jordan of basketball, who, right? You who, who, are, who are the, you got four guys. Four guys. You got four guys. Oh, who, who are the four? All time. Is that, is that all time? All time. All time. Yeah. All, all, I don't care. Of all time. Well, that's a di different question. <laughs> no, it's not. What? Well, definitely not you. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Jay, and then who else? Yeah. yeah okay. If I was to pick four of them all time, I think I would go Rick Ward, Kyle Tapio, Keith Curtis. Ooh, the fourth one. I've got a couple. I don't know. Yeah, see, that's the last guy. Jay. No, not me. I, I would not put myself there. Not yet. Um, probably Vinny Shepherd. Clark. Vinny Clark's a good one. Vinny. Dave Shepard. Yeah, Dave, it, Dave you, Shepherd. you can't do it in four. Can you carve, carve, can you? carve an extra face? <laughs> Make five? They could have. They were working on it, weren't they? <laughs> they, they were thinking about it. Yeah, I'll yeah. do it. Vinny Clark was a good one. Yeah. Vinny Clark and good. But, but, man, you've man, got... You've, what's the um, criteria? Cause, yeah, because you've got you got the Zollingers. Yeah, yeah, you got, that's you got true. Mark, Ryan. Mark Thompson. Yeah. Like. yeah, Mark Thompson, Ryan Zollinger, um, Anthony Zollinger, Nate. There's so many epic, like legendary riders. It's Chuck. It Hogan. almost if you to decide the greatest that and that's what it comes down to the greatest rimshaw racers is you just gotta start looking at the stats. Yeah. You know, it, you can debate on this all day because there's <clears> so many guys that did so well. Kirk Williamson wouldn't yeah, exactly. be on there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so do you just come down Tom to Tom Roby? Tom Roby. Well, you've, you've got Legends of Jackson, for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then you've got cause Rim, Rimshaw. Rimshaw was tough, like, to, to build a circuit around it. I mean, they, the circuit has done well. Yeah. But it's, it's fluctuated because it's because it's an association. Yep. You know, rather than a, than a, a professional right. circuit. Exactly. Like, exactly. Like a business, you know. Yep. They, they could benefit and lose things going both ways there. But yeah. But Jackson has kind of been its own beast there, and so you have Legends of Jackson and, and Mark Thompson yeah. definitely got to be on the list on that one. Oh, for sure. But I mean, Zollinger's, and and not even Anthony Dave Ryan and, and Nate, but but Tony, Tony and yeah, Nick. all of them. Nick, yeah, all those of them. those guys dominated for years. Travis, yeah. Travis, I mean, you know, all Travis those guys. was an animal. That's a tough. That's a. I mean, you can literally a, debate on that for but hours. But if, yeah. if you had to put four guys on a mountain, just based on Jackson, if you just went to Jackson alone, Keith. Kyle, but but Keith and Kyle. I mean, yeah, Keith and Kyle have set the record, but Keith and Kyle are doing now what Rick, Rick used to do back then. Yeah, Rith and Kirk and it's hard to to conglomerate that between eras. You know, like just I'm like football. My guns on Who, that. Who's they, the who's the greatest in football all time? Like, how do you compare that? How do you compare Mahomes to John Elway? Do you? Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah. I would like to see see a hand built class come back. Yes. Yeah. Me too. How do we make that happen? I don't know. some cool Petition. builds. Yeah. Yeah. Because open mod I mean open mod is cool. Your mod sleds are, are pretty sick. They're but, they're rad, but they're but the average race fan doesn't know what they're looking at. Yeah. But man, when those two built hand built tube chassis rolled out. Oh man, still so cool. Like that that pipe, was pipe fun. sticking out. Yeah. Just, yeah, tube chassis. Like and a piece like of the hood. Didn't they do a race like that here a year ago? They Brought out the, the old sleds. Stuff. Yeah, and they still do that. They still do that. Yeah, yeah. like like Nate's been. That's racing the closest his, his you'll get stuff. to that. Yeah, the tube open chassis. Class. Yeah. yeah, because a lot of people either have or buy those sleds, find them somewhere, kind of bring them back, and bring them back yeah. for that. And yeah. we freaking love that. Yeah. We did that obviously last year with the Rev. Yep. Which. That's a whole nother topic, but <laughs> to think the rev is vintage in the first place. Yeah. So do you want to know? If we got to bring this up because I still kick myself in the butt about it, and it's I've got to be better on the new sleds. And maybe I shouldn't even say this, but I'm going to. I might get in trouble. I'm sorry if I do. <laughs> we built that rev mod in like four nights before Jackson. You know, we had a lot of stuff going on trying to prepare for Jackson itself. So the rev was kind of put to the side. Um, it was a marketing project. Obviously, our focus was racing, and but we found a little bit of time at night, like in the midnight hours, we'd burn the oil, and we built that thing in like four nights. It went from a 440 snowcross sled, 03, was pretty, and it was very clean, to an 800 twin pipe hill climb mod, like 
stripped to the nuts. It was it really trick. I'm sure you've seen it. Did you get to see? Well, it? yeah, your, your your oil reservoir is your fuel tank. Yeah, yeah. It's, we did. We're super proud of that. So, <laughs> that was so a good one. Like, I like the sharpie on the side. Yeah. Yeah. And then like Tom Roby come over and help us, you know, because that was kind of his era, so he was able to kind of get his hands in there. But we built this thing in a short time. We go to Jackson. We hadn't even rode it, tested it, nothing. We put an HC skid under it, which was really cool. Like, <laughs> <laughs> there was trick. And Failed geometry class, but mounted a <laughs> 2023 skid in an 03 chassis. Oh, I love that. We awesome. go to Jackson, and Thursday morning was qualifying for the vintage class. And early that morning, I think Wednesday night, we were still till 12 o'clock working on it in the trailer, like yeah. finishing, bolting some brackets up because it was just kind of scabbed together to get to Jackson. We had other, other stuff we were trying to focus on. Early that morning, we run up Cash Creek to see if it would even run. Like, we'd started up in the shop, we knew that, but we're like, clutching, we have no idea. Like, does it come from back Midwest? Like, the jetting, we kind of thought we were close. We just kind of took a shot in the dark. And, like, jetting was not our area. Like, I'm fairly familiar when I grew up with it, but it's still not, like, my my baby. I've never jetted anything. This full disclosure. Never me jetted. Jets, like. I'm like, <laughs> what are these? <laughs> Here you go. So... We get this thing are, to like. Are these beads for a bracelet? Like, what, <laughs> what do I do with this? We kind of get to run, and I'm like, I think we can get through qualifying. It goes. It's, it was fast, even though it wasn't. We knew it wasn't where it needed to be, but it was like still impressively fast. Yeah. We're like, I think we can ride this good enough to get in, and we can go test it tonight a little bit more, and maybe make some adjustments. And so we do. We qualified one two on it, and it like felt impressively really good the front shocks were blown because we didn't get those rebuilt it has all the, the stock front shocks from the snow cross sleds but like the sled handled really really well finals day that, that or i guess that evening i go back up made some clutching changes and a little bit of jetting we get it like tacking like 8800 and it was just singing i'm like oh boy <laughs> and we our clutching still wasn't where we wanted it but it, it was a lot better we go to the finals we won two in the finals smoke them well, Friday afternoon was the finals for that, but that morning we had raced all our stock and improved classes qualifying to the, to the catwalk. Mm -hmm. When the finals and the vintage come, I was a second faster to the catwalk on the rev than my stock turbo. <laughs> <laughs> and I, like, I don't know. And I'm just like, that sled still works good. Well, yeah. I mean, I can tell you, I, I'll answer that one because that one's obvious to me. The, the rev was a race sled adapted to the mountains. Yeah. Yeah. And the, yeah. the 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 summits are a mountain sled dedicated, race. and they they're they're not the best. I mean, they're not built for racing. So right. Much. And ultimately, the, the HCE up. will make a difference. I bet you'll be faster on the HCE oh, yeah. because oh, it's for more, sure. it's built for yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. And ultimately, here's the thing: is you know the revs, or the wider front end. You know they drive so good. Like we're when we're racing, qualifying, everybody like even like Andy's time, Keith's time, all these guys. We're all right there. So like the rev was faster than everybody's stuff, but. These new sleds are top, they're tippy, so that bottom of Jackson, you know, it's it's, yeah. it's hard, it's tough to get around in corners on these mountain sleds now. So I think it actually slows us down a little bit and we don't realize it, and then you go get on something that drives that well, mm -hmm. like you just sit in the neutral position and drive it, and it's fast. Like, we just were so much faster through the corners, you know, and, and that's the thing, like it wasn't like, oh, someone didn't do their job, like you shouldn't have won on that. It was like, no, that sled is literally built for that go-kart style racing in the bottom yeah so but yeah. it was so, cool like so does that take you back to the drawing board now and like all right what can i do to my mountain sled you don't really want to widen your ski stance but yes and no because <clears throat> the top of jackson the other sleds are going to work a lot better for sure yeah. right yeah you know, like it's it's a a sword, yeah. yeah so obviously a lot of these races you everything's you know the style of racing has turned from driving in the corners to everyone's hanging on one ski now so yeah. hang out the side so that's the thing like Yes, our current race sleds are actually yes set up better, much yeah. better for, yeah. the, for the style of racing. For sure. If we could get everybody to go drive their sleds, if you could convince Keith Curtis, and Dan <laughs> Peterson, and Annie Thomas to drive their sleds on two skis through the corners, <laughs> we could we, every, you'd see everything go back towards that style, right? Yeah. But like the hang it out styles, that's just the way it is. It's so that's fast. where I, I don't think people appreciate how hard it is right now. Oh no, to be, they don't. To be going back to the consistency thing, to be that consistent weekend after weekend. Oh man, because to do that one time. And not bobble. Like yeah. To be able to do one corner, one flag, one gate, yeah. hanging it out at that speed, full throttle, that's and be able to transition back over to the other side and then flow into the next corner. And yeah. That's so impressive. It's the hardest thing I've ever done yeah. on a snowmobile, off the snowmobile, mentally, physically. It's 
Yeah, yeah. It, it takes so much prep and focus. Especially, and yeah, the focus. Stab and stableness. But yeah. it's – and you have to be able to do it. You know, you have to be able to put those runs together that, like, that way because as much talent is in there, someone's going to do it. So if you don't do it, someone else is going to. Like, you – it's very rare that you make a big mistake and you're going to win a class. Yeah. The yeah. smallest mistake now will cost you. Well, it's it's definitely more competitive now because of that. Like, back, back when you were talking about when everybody raced with two skis on the ground. Yeah. It was – it was competitive, but it was different. Yeah, it was. Because now it was little, the ratio was a little bit more machine. Exactly. Yep. yep. And, and now it's a little bit more athlete. Yeah, exactly. A lot more. I mean, yeah, well, yeah. Definitely more athlete. Still, the machine is a huge part of it, but the athlete, physically, yes, but mentally is everything. Because you, you go from sitting there, no practice, no warm up, to you have to be perfect for as fast as you can go up that hill zero to 100 that's yep. hard to do and then without sit, warming up you know, like sit wait for another so class and do what, it again what's been like over the years the hardest race to make that transition like you, you've been sick and you're like like uh, there was a story uh, i think it was on a podcast where they were interviewing ricky carmichael yeah and he talked about crapping his pants in the middle of a moment <laughs> And he just rode with and he it. Just kept racing. Yeah, just, well, it he's in the zone. There's something about taking your mind off things. Yeah. So like when but, you're but sick, you, but you can't be like perfect every single time. Like yeah. you've got to be sitting at the bottom. And that was my problem with hill yeah. climbing when I raced. Was like, I can't, I can't do everything for a weekend and be ready to go for a minute and a half. Yeah. And be yeah. be focused. It's tough. Like that's something you know. I've I feel like I've had a lot of success. Like when I pulled the starting line, like. It just, everything turns into a tunnel to me. In, in a way of, I have one job to do right now, and is be the best I can and be perfect. For sure. And, yeah, I don't know. Like, But it's you're, situational. It, like, it is. From Bear Lake to Jackson, you're, you you got to be perfect at different things almost. Yeah. I mean, the course is a, co train, a course, train, is the course changes, but I don't know. It's, we're Ill still, I'm tough. still trying to fi figure that out. But if your that. trucks broke down or yeah, your breakfast sucked. your girlfriend or, broke up with the, uh, <laughs> your breakfast sucked. <laughs> yeah, your girl. Yeah, your girlfriend, girlfriend broke, broke up. up. You got, yeah, you're probably going to be fat. Shit yeah. in your pants. Right? You're that pretty careless right. for a minute. Yeah. But, like, yeah. the sick thing, that's almost better because it takes your mind off it. Yeah. There's a... You can overthink it. Overthinking so is the death of me for sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like... What, what, what's your favorite run? Let's just stick to Jackson. What, all right. Your favorite weekend or your favorite run at Jackson? 2000... And, and your worst. 2018... Favorite 2018 open mod. What'd you do? I won. Yeah, you won. What? But, but what, like, like the whole day, the whole experience, like that run, like what did it feel like? Oh, it just felt effortless. I wasn't worried about it. I, you know, I had the nervous butterflies at first, but once that light went green, they said go, I was gone and it just flowed, got to the top. Had the fast time and sat up there and waited for, I was early in the class, so I had the fast time at first, and then I had to sit up there and watch you Everybody. and Keith and Andy and Kyle all come up and hope they didn't beat me, and uh, they didn't, and that was definitely my favorite moment to date. Like, when, when you're going That's up, cool. are you think, are you catching yourself thinking, like, man, I did that fast? No. Well, that was Well, well like, that there's, was a, there's a little moment where you're like, because you, you consider certain parts of the course, like, you don't think about every little bump, but like a section, you know, you got to think about where you're going to go. And if like if you execute your line during the run, I think like if I do it good, I'm like, all right, that was good. D a split second. Mm -hmm. N less time than saying, all right, that was good. You know what I mean? It's just like that. I see. I think about the weirdest random stuff. <laughs> <in your run. laughs> like what? Like the weirdest thoughts come across, like. I'll be blitzing up Jackson, and like I'll see a tree with a flag on it, like a little string or something on it. Like, well, huh. that was kind of weird. What was that? And next, you know, I'm three gates later. Like my mind, like, and that's kind of my competition mind. Like when I rodeo, like I'll be riding a bucking horse, and I'm not sitting there going, "Do it perfect, do it perfect," because if you're thinking, yeah. you're thinking about what you're doing, you're you're already behind. You know, especially riding bucking horses. And so, like I'll be riding a bucking horse, and like. I'll randomly pick out like a random face in the crowd and be like, well, that's a goofy looking guy. And like, that's the kind of thoughts that like come across my mind, like mid competition, like mid ride, like, and same thing with hill climb. I get those same things 
but I, I found that that's when I'm like that. I'm comfortable, I'm loose, and that's when I'm at my best. Is mm -hmm. when my mind is relaxed. That tells me I'm relaxed, like mid run. You know, I'm still focused, but like these subconscious things are happening, yeah. and, and it tells me I'm not tight and wound up and overthinking stuff. Just in the moment. When I'm thinking about, okay, get through this gate, get through this gate, got to get to this section, that's when I find my, mis my mistakes the most is when I start thinking about it too much. Like I have to just, I think about it, I vision it before I pull up the line, and then when I take off, it's like, just go fast, just go. So when you win open mod, like Skidoo is just over the moon, right? Like just No, they didn't care back then. <laughs> no, they did. But it But I mean that's the big deal. Like, oh, what, was, what is what is the class? Do they want to win nine stock or they want to win stock king? They want to win it all, obviously, but stock king is huge. Any king, I think, right? Like at the end of the day they want to just they want to win Jackson Hole. Yeah, so that king of kings. comes down to King of Kings. <clears throat> and and now so with I the do. classes you know, it typically was done with the mod. Mod, not always. We've seen a lot of different, you know, classes. Mm -hmm. The stock improved win that King of Kings. Not very often. Typically, it's the mod. But, you know, you win the mod class, it gives you a real good shot. You have the horsepower. You have the lighter sled. The handle's yeah. better. But now we have factory turbos that are extremely fast in the stock so, class. Like it's kind of shaking that up a little bit too. <laughs> and it went from now like, okay, didn't have luck in the stock class. Like, gotta win the mod. Now it's like. Well, if I win the mod, I still have some crazy fast dude in the stock king run to to try to beat, too, because that sled's equally as fast. Maybe a little yeah. heavier, but just as fast. If I make a mistake, he capitalizes, it could be over. So what's your best Jackson exp experience? And then we'll get back into the worst. Mm -hmm. I think I got two that really always stick with me. Obviously, my first big win in 2016 when I won open mod and eight improved and then improved king that, that year kind of all went together as one pit in one memory. Um, but that, you, you were rookie of the year the next year, right? Racer of the year. Race, yeah, racer, yeah, of the year yeah, racer of the year, not rookie of the year. Racer of the year. Racer of the year. But that open mod run there, you know, it was it was just like, that was easy. And I just blitzed it. You know, it was like a couple seconds I won the class by. Hmm. Um, but the one that I'm real proud of was um, two, I think it was two years ago when I won uh, 8,000 stock. Yeah. I, I wanted a stock win there because it's such a prestigious win. You know, it's it says a lot for the manufacturers, I think. And obviously <laughs> they feel that way. I, that's why they want it because that's the when someone wins a stock class, they say, hey, our stock snowmobile wins. It's the best thing out there, right? You know, so I wanted one of those. It's been kind of elusive to me for a long time. And to get both of them in the same year was. You know, that was like, cool, man. Yeah, it was. That one's probably my favorite. Yeah. So. That's cool. What's your worst experience? Oh. <laughs> Where do I begin? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, sometimes. Oh, no shit. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my worst. Do you know what you have thought one yet? Uh, there's a lot to choose from. The worst run no. I've had that I kicked myself the most for was in 2016 in the Mod King run. Oh, yeah. Because I had one open mod, and I did it with a pretty good gap. And then Kyle Tapio had won eight mod. And so, and, I, and Kyle, like, Kyle's still to this day, like, everyone's thinking, oh, Kyle's getting older, they're slowing down, but... He, Jackson Hole is kind of his baby. Like, he can still show up and smoke everybody. And I mean, smoke us. And he'd won eight, won eight mod. So it was him and I in the king runs and some small mods. But, like, that was the guy I was like, okay, Kyle's probably going to be the one to beat. And I was last out. And I was, this is perfect. I get to watch everybody. And then I get to go. And Kyle had just a, a good, clean run. I said, okay. Like, that was the exact run he had before. If I go to the exact same run, like, I can win mod king. And then that gives me a chance for that king of kings. And... I had a perfect bottom. I was kind of blitzing it. I think I was a little amped up, blitzing it a little harder than I had in the open mod that I class that I'd won. And I go around the set where the pole used to be in the middle, like the second catwalk, and it was real rough. Like I have the video somewhere. It's pretty cool. But uh, I come around that corner and we were setting up, like kind of slowing down in the corner, getting straight, going through all the stumps and the rocks that were right through there and ruts. Cause then he had like a weird turn. And instead of slowing down, I just thought, man, you were going fast. Just keep going. And I just hung it on edge. It didn't need to. Like, I was ahead of I had a second and a half split, I think, at the catwalk. So I had to just be smooth and get through. Instead, I kind of got greedy and tried to go faster. And I ended up endoing up Jackson, like uphill, <laughs> and took myself right out of it, you know, for no reason. And I think that's the run to this day. I'm like, man. But that's racing. You yeah. know, you, you learn, and it's like, okay, well, I'm going to go do it, try to do it again. Mental Barry? Still thinking? I mean, 
worst run or worst experience? Anything. Yeah. Crap your pants on the run? No. Once? What about when you walked out in the whoops? No. Yeah. When you broke your legs. But uh, the year after you just come back from your broken legs. Yeah, but th uh, at that point I wasn't really like, I was competitive, you know, wanting to win, but I was 15, 16. Didn't, meant a lot less at that point, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. There's been a few runs that I just, back to the overthinking, like, just freaked myself out and Beat got stuck at, like, there. gate 14 or whatever. And it's like, this isn't me. Like, what the hell am I doing? So. It's tough. Yeah. Jackson's tough. It's yeah. The, it's, a, it's a mind game up there. It is. But I'm over that. We're, we're past that. For like hitting a gate that you shouldn't have hit. Yeah. Get you. That can, that Actually, okay. Lot. So, 2021. Yep. The first year of factory mods. Thousand improved, I think it was. Yeah. There was this corner that was like it was straight up into it, and then di like directly 90 degrees, um, right by the gate. Remember that one? Yep. Yep. And it was a big trench. And it was the the gate was literally like one pole was almost in the trench so it was so hard to miss the gate and i got up to it turned and i don't know what touched the gate but something did and it moved and they marked me there and i had a pretty decent time i wouldn't have won it but i i think it was top three my time was and they marked me at that gate <laughs> so that was kind of upsetting not, you know, it was my fault, but I felt like it was their fault and this and that. So, <laughs> I don't know. That was the great gate debate. The great gate debate. <laughs> wow. That was clever. That was clever. The great gate. It's never ending and it will how always be never ending. How long have you wanted to say that? <laughs> say that? <laughs> Got that run written down for They're a while. Like, say that five times fast. The great debate going away. can do it. <laughs> but. Oh yeah, that's there's there's a lot of those. There's that's yeah. the thing with hill climb racing is there's so much seat time. People think there's not, but there kind of is when you really get into it. Five runs a day, you know, if you're qualifying and everything. So like when you start talking, like what runs stick out, which one? There's there's so many that go both directions. Yeah, there's so many runs. I'm like, man, that was the coolest run. And then a week later, it might be a different run, you know. And there's so many runs. You're like, what was I doing? Like I was an idiot. I messed up. Made a really stupid mistake. That was. But we're all human. That's just the cool thing. Nature of competition is. Well, it's, it's fun listening to you guys tell stories like that because I, I listen to like Pulp MX podcast mm -hmm. all the time, yeah. and they'll they'll bring on you know. Chad Reed or, or right or McGrath McGrath of these guys and they can remember what gear they were in and what corner oh, yeah. and what lap of yeah. a race 20 years ago it's crazy yeah. and, it's and what happened and who won and yeah those experiences as a racer when you're in that moment it stays with you forever it's pretty when, cool. when they move gates do you guys have any input on that or they just they just do a course change and yeah we have input right like yeah like the, the I mean, Jackson's a little different, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's not a Rimshaw race, you know, it's Snow Devils. But, like, Rimshaw itself, absolutely. You know, we, and over the last few years, I was on the board for quite a while, like, and I was leaning towards that. I'm like, and it's tough to get the help to be able to, someone to be on the course always checking gates because a berm starts pushing into a gate and then turns into a ticking time bomb. So yeah. who's going to, you know, everyone's hitting it the same way and then it just finally tips over. Like, why does he get a mark? Like, we should have moved that gate before it become that kind of a potential problem. So over the years, we've kind of adapted where now rim shots, like, if you have a concern about a gate, you know, just go talk to somebody, say, hey, there's this gate. We should just move it now before we get into it. That way it doesn't become a problem yeah. and a big debate, you know, over, well, I actually didn't hit it. It just tipped over because I went, as I my went roost by. My hit yeah, it. My and it, like, and it, it gets to a point where it's so vulnerable but, after so many riders, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, to your point, um, if we think there's a, problem with the gate or you know the section of the course we you know tell tell the people that be yeah. powers that be not to like change it in our favor by any means but, but just, like hey, if it's gonna be a problem for like yeah. somebody hitting it like if keith hit a gate in a berm and it took him out like yeah we'd love that but we also wouldn't because we want to beat him straight up so yeah. you know it's just one of those things where we want it to be a fair competition where you don't have to worry about the gates as far as hitting them in the course 
or say the timing lights and whatnot. So, yeah. You hit two gates in nine in open mod this year, Jackson. Just remembered that. Yeah, you Maybe did. That's my worst run. Now I'm mad about that. <laughs> and you were like hanging off of the sled, Superman had such style. such a good run going. Right at the top, hit a gate. I'm like, well, that was worth it. <laughs> oh, so that's the Rimshaw racing. That's hill climb racing. Like, you it's just keep thinking of them, and they're just like, oh, that run, this run, that run. Now that, yeah, yeah now that you ask us, I think personally I have more runs that I don't know what the term would be like uh, that I'm disappointed in or that I regret not regret but I have more bad runs than good runs because good runs would be me winning I know I can do that so like so anytime it's, it's I'm only not, a good run if you win um no <laughs> if if I clean the run and to the best of my ability and it's just not fast enough, that's a good run. You feel good with it. Yeah. Like you left it all there's, on the table. But there's way more than not that I left so much on the table. And that brings us back to, like, that little mistake you have to be so perfect. Yeah. Like, it's so hard to put that perfect run together and every single time feel like you did everything you could. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's where it comes down to is, like, the one or two guys that do it each day are the ones that win. You know, because we we all make that little mistake. You know, so you leave the day going, that that little mistake used to be okay. Now it's like, man, that cost me. Like, got to be better. You know, so it's it's wild how that's evolved a little bit. Well, it's, you're you're racing yourself more. Yeah, yeah you are more than, for sure. Than you're racing 100%, 100%. other guys. Hundred because, because you're just trying to make five mistakes this time instead of six. Yeah, yeah. or zero. Zero instead yeah. of one. Yeah. And, have, and the one thing with hill climbing that especially newcomers find out, and especially hills like Jackson, one mistake turns into, like, ten about that fast. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in a hurry. Like, <coughs> Jackson is the toughest hill. Like, you make a mistake, like, you just turn into this mass recovery panic mode. Is it because of the mental aspect, or you get winded instantly, or arm pumped, or all of everything. Like, your mental, the nature of the hill Takes itself. your momentum. <laughs> <laughs> He's already dying. <laughs> But just Jackson itself, it's so gnarly, you know, like people don't realize how steep and unforgiving that hill is. And it gets so rough where, like, you make a mistake, like, I mean, look at last year, like qualifying at Mod Day, there was, like, 25% of the racers went over the top. I it know. Was hard last year rough. qualifying. And it's like, that's a hit, that hill's just gnarly, you know, like, it's, yeah, it is yeah, the, for sure. the biggest, gnarliest hill, so. It's a feat to get over it. When you make a mistake, it's the ability to be able to recover and make a good run out of it and sometimes you do sometimes you make a mistake and you end up being faster than you were in your last run and it was really clean because you just pulled it together other runs you make a mistake and it just goes downhill from there sometimes literally downhill yeah <laughs> <laughs> and downhill at jackson is a bad look oh, it's fun for spectators it's like, oh love it. shit it's, but yeah spectators it's, it's a sickening feeling watching yeah. your mods or something go down that hill yeah I'm i bad. think I think Andy Thomas and Tony Zollinger, oh, in my memory, poor Andy. have probably the biggest scars in their brain still. Oh my gosh! Watching sleds go down that hill, you know. And I've lost, I've lost two. You know, wasn't bad. One was just a little banged up. Um, I lost a mod once, and it was a high snow year and pretty soft, so it, it come out of it pretty well. You know, a little bent tunnel, something we just took a hammer and straight back up. But <laughs> throw it on Craigslist. There, very much. Fixed. Yeah, but uh, mountain sledder swap me. Like that one year, I think it was 2017. I th it wasn't 2017. Ah, uh, yeah. When the ice and it got really warm, like six during the day, and then mm -hmm. overnight froze. It's just so the morning runs were just ice oh skates. Have goodness. you talked to Andy about this? I should. You I should. should. I want to hear, this, hear him tell this whole story. He's, yeah, it's that, heavy. That year <laughs> ate more sleds at Jackson than any year I can really remember since I've been racing. Poor Plus. Andy. And it was all in the morning. And even in, at the end of the day, King runs, there was still ice. Like the top of the snow was just as hard as this table still. Yeah. But, it was crazy, but I remember some of them sleds coming down there. They get going so fast. Heel help could barely stand up there because they couldn't dig in and get a hold of nothing. So like every sled that got a, got spun out went down, and you're just like, holy fast. crap! And then you pull up the starting airline, like, don't stop, don't <laughs> don't yeah. crash. Like you have to go through the starting lights, or your sled is wrecked. Like there was like three sleds that got caught. Yeah, at all of them that turned around. <laughs> yeah, that year I'm like, if it goes south. I don't care about the gates at that point. I just got to go over the hill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I don't care here. where I'm going. I just got to go up and up and over. Up and over, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Wild stuff. All right. Well, we've hit an hour mark on this thing. Oh. Let's put it to bed. Time flies when you're having fun. Absolutely. We need to get more of these stories. <laughs> that was the fastest hour of today. 
What what was your line? Gate? Great, the great, great gate, gate debate. debate. The great, the great gate, debate. gate debate. You should make a T-shirt. Hashtag great yeah. gate debate. That, that should be a J.M. Blaine T-shirt. Yeah, see, we've hey. already come up with two new on this trip. shirts design. What's the other one? Design. Uh, checkers, checkers or wreckers. And like oh, checkers. Yeah. So like sort of a, crash. a checker flag or the word or and like a wrecking truck or something. A wrecker. Instead of saying checkers yeah. or wreckers. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> I'd buy it. Hell yeah. I'd buy it. Bruce. He's Which got the first if, one. Pre-order. We're sponsoring this show, so we're going to shout out that we have merch now, if people don't know. Look at this. Do you, you have a website? Where do you get this stuff? Yeah, well, we, we've stuff. shared the link um, a couple times on Instagram. You know, we're going to, now the winter's coming up, we're going to try to push it a lot more. That way people are familiar with it. But um, this company from back east, 850 Co., um, is a guy we met. He kind of reached out to us last year and, and uh, said, hey, you guys are going to do merch? Like, I'd love to be part of it. And we weren't sure for a long time what to think, but uh, actually a really, really cool dude and put in a lot of effort for us. And uh, he's like, oh, I'd love to do it. So we've got it set up. It's like a drop ship deal. So uh, you go on the website and order tees, tank tops, hoodies, all the stuff. You know, obviously right now we have this one design. We had to start with something, but. Uh, you don't know what the website is, do you? 850 yeah, co. Yeah, 850 co. <laughs> oh, that guy's yeah. Okay. It, yeah, yeah. There that is guy. like a particular yeah. link that will take you right to it. But if you go to 850 co's page, right on his page is a link to the Jay and Blaine Show. So what you need to do, here's a little tip. You need yeah. to go buy a domain called jayandblaineshow.com uh-huh. and then do a redirect to that redirect. specific landing page. Ask him about that. Okay. All right, write that down. Then you can just come on these things and you can say, yeah, go to jayandblaineshow.com. Order your merch. And it Soon. redirects to their Page. Yeah, yeah, you'll, yeah, you'll you just type, type that in, and you'll land on that page to buy your stuff. That's Soon. funny. The older guys teaching us about like technology and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll rephrase. Here's you the older guy. Thank you. I need to go dye my hair. No, Here's I soon. love Go to the jamblaineshow dot com and you'll find merch, but not yet. <laughs> <laughs> go. We got to go buy the domain. So hold on. The domain. We have to invest a little bit more. The great gate debate. But. I think our merch. I, I'm excited for the merch. I mean, obviously, your guys' merch. We love it. And, yeah. Uh, it just. I think it's cool to have, you know. It like, is. It's fun. And I think yeah. a lot of the reason I want it is like instances like Jackson Hole and stuff. I want to be able to throw something of, our, of ours out. Yeah. Like pump up the fans. Hey, this is ours. We're not throwing. And it's cool to throw a BL stuff out too. You know, be uh, your sponsor sporting. You want to help them, but like it's kind of a different like aspect. Like, hey, I got pride in this now. Like yeah. it's ours. Yeah. Yeah. And, this uh, has yeah. my name on it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can I ask one question? Yeah. Where do you see the sport in five years? Any different? Like as in. Like going downhill or uphill or anything. How do you see it? Or or the sled industry, I guess. I, I know, and I know you guys know more than we know as far as what's down the road. But mm. you five know, years, I don't. Ten years ago, we're like, what what can be next? I know. Yeah. Five years ago, what's next? Like, is there going to be another like, what's next in five years? There has to be. I mean, this is no. just keeps changing, and like these these sleds get so much better so fast now. Like the technology. So honestly, like. I couldn't tell you where I think it's going to be. I, you I just hope it going. stays healthy. Yeah, you know, and considering new, new people keep coming in. Yeah. yeah, but considering there's no like Armageddon, World War Four, Three, whatever, you know, we all still, everyone's still thriving, and you know, no matter uh, depression or not, or what is this Alex rates. Jones show? <laughs> I don't We're know. Snowmobiles. Yeah, I know, but. The economy drives this industry. Like, we can't buy $20,000 sleds when so eat we're more all poor. Eat more potatoes. Potatoes are uh, good. Yeah. Sure. How does... Because the well, farmers are driving the industry. In? Yeah. I'll throw my farming plug in there. <laughs> <laughs> I love potatoes. That's, I eat a lot of potatoes. See, there we go. That, that's, that's the end around of that question there. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> go buy my potatoes. Potato. <laughs> if you buy potatoes, the sledding will be good. In five there you years. go. There you go. No, no I, okay. I, I guarantee you in five years we will be talking about the 2023s and how bad they handled. Yep. Yeah, how, yeah. how they heavy were they were. And how, yeah, how weird they felt. Yeah. It's true. It's just crazy how like, how far we'll advance from now. But you know what will still be great? The Rev. <laughs> that the Rev that ain't great. no shit. The Rev is forever great. <laughs> You'll still be clocking fast times on the Yeah, yeah right. baby. All right. All right. Check out uh, Jay and Blaine's show on YouTube. Uh, thank you to Jay Menaberry and Blaine Matthews for coming on the show and just talking rim shot racing. Yeah, that's there, it, what it ended up being. It's but a it sport fun. that it, it's an awesome sport, it and is. it doesn't Tree. get a lot of like, it doesn't get the coverage of like Supercross, Motocross, or no, racing. It's does. tough to cover, you know. And I it is. There's I that. hope to see it 
start gaining that traction. You know, I think there's some stuff within Rimshaw, yeah. formatting, structure-wise, you know, Marketing. that can make it a lot better. So it's easier to market and have pre something presentable to I, sell. Right. I like. I would rather watch Jackson on the live stream than be there in person. It's done pretty for well. me uh, for media because yeah. I c I can screen record your guys' runs mm -hmm. and then if it's if it's a good run or a good crash, now I've got it. I can yeah. Repost yeah. It. But you can see every angle too if it's done mm -hmm. right. You know. Yeah. yeah. In person is rad, right? Like, yeah. if you can go sick, but you got to be if in the we right can spot. have, yeah, exactly. So. If we can have good coverage of these races, trust me, like, it's there's so much potential there. There's because there's so much talent. There's some of the best riders a, in the world. Yeah, like there's everything that you would want in an entertainment, you know, environment, power sports wise. That it's there. We just need to figure out how to get it out. And yeah, it'll it'll come. It will. Like it'll there's come. a reason yeah. that we do it. Keith does it. Andy like. That's right. So. Yeah. All right. Well. Subscribe. Subscribe to all of us. <laughs> Ramshaw, Snow West, Jane Blaine, Bruce Curbs Farming, Potatoes. dot <laughs> com. There you go. <laughs> all right. Thanks again to our sponsor, Polaris Snowmobiles. I feel like we've had Keith Curtis on the show in spirit. Yeah, we yeah. have. Um, yeah, you don't need to mention the sponsor because we already talked about Keith for. 20 minutes. <laughs> Keith this, keep that. Uh, check your local Polaris <laughs> dealer. Go check out the 850 RMK or go to Polaris.com. 850? Right. In Don't season. they have a 900? In season. Oh, sorry. In season <laughs> models. Here, here will you, you want to do the Polaris read? <laughs> <laughs> Mike, drop. <No. laughs> Can we stop? <laughs> I got to get out of here. All right, thanks, guys. Hey, thanks for having us, Ryan. We appreciate it.